Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Friday, December 6th, 5 p.m. Mountain Time, 2019. Take a look at the models towards Christmas. They're showing every state except Florida having a white Christmas. Keep calm. It's boom time. Big Bear Mountain shatters November snowfall record with 54 inches. More snow is forecast. That's crazy. Big Bear Mountain Resort is off to the snowiest start ever with 54 inches of fresh powder falling last month alone thanks to a major storm during the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. The amount shatters the previous record set back in 1964 of 38 inches for total natural snowfall in November. Half of the average winter snowfall has fallen already. Most of the snow accumulated at Big Bit Mountain on Snow Summit Thanksgiving Day, setting a two-day 48-inch record. Smashing records at Big Bear. Did you hear about the weather, uh, the air quality in Salt Lake City uh, this week? On Wednesday, it finished the day with the worst air quality in the country. It's absolutely disgusting. While you're being taxed for CO2, your children are dying from actual pollution. Salt Lake City, Utah inversion has taken hold over parts of Utah, causing the highest levels of air pollution in the country. Some schools across the state chose not to let children go outside during recess because of the quality of the air on Wednesday. Salt Lake City reached an air quality index above 150, which is considered unhealthy. Levels of PM 2.5 in Salt Lake reached levels nine times higher than L.A. Powder targets the Rockies in California. One week storm totals reached near eight feet in some regions of the Sierras. And the powder party isn't done yet, with more snow coming to much of the West this weekend and early next week. It's deep in California. Take a look at some of the seven day totals 81 inches, 80 inches, 90 inches in the south side of the Sierras, 89 inches in Bear Valley, 79 inches in Mammoth Top. Currently, there's lake effect snow today, interior BC and Alberta, and some central Rockies flurries. And on Saturday and Sunday and Monday, a strong storm will bring one to three feet of snow to California. Elsewhere around the western U.S. and Canada, expect a moderate snowfall of four to ten inch range. And there's the extended outlook. Warm and rainy for the northeast, December 14th. There's your snowfall forecast. Shovel, scrape, repeat. This season is one of the snowiest ever in Rochester, New York. Like a broken record. If it seems like it's been snowing and snowing and snowing some more, you're not mistaken. It has been one of the snowiest starts to the winter season that Rochester has ever seen. Through Thursday, Rochester measured over 24 inches of snow since the first flakes fell November 1st. That makes this season the ninth snowiest since 1871 when official records be began being kept. Now let's talk about Minnesota weather. Slightly cooler Friday than possible. Record cold next week. It's possible. It's been cold. Also for Illinois, beyond the forecast, another Arctic blast ahead. Here's your future cast for December 11th. All single digits with the big zero over there in Champaign. Another snowstorm aiming for Wisconsin at the start of next week with bitter cold to follow. Sunday night through Monday, heaviest impacts from Pierre through Minneapolis and Salt St. Marie. Take a look. Snow, snow, and more snow. An unsettled week for the West. A large and strong Pacific storm system will impact a good portion of the West this week. Heavy rain, widespread mountain snow, gusty winds, and a variety of marine-related hazards are likely. The heavy rain threat may result in flash flooding today and Saturday across north-central portions of California and southwestern Oregon, especially near and recent and vulnerable burn scars. Heads up, winter storm watches throughout central Montana, Idaho, winter storm warnings all the way down the Sierras with flood watches and warnings in northern California. Click on your county for more details. And let's take a look at these models. Whew. That system's going to be moving in this weekend through your Monday, bringing heavy snow to the Sierras and light to moderate snow throughout the entire Rocky Mountains. Big winter here, central Utah. And then an eastern storm moving in Tuesday into the mountains, Wednesday, upstate New York and New England getting hit again. 
with some light to moderate snow. And the pattern continues very snowy until this little sneak attack blizzard hits the center of the country right before Christmas. Looks like the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th. Hello. These are just models, and they're far out. But here is the actual probability of you having a white Christmas. The area is in white, almost 100%, which is where I am right here. I'll leave you links to this map so you can see the probability of a white Christmas in your region. It's going to be very high this year, very high probability of a white Christmas. Three tropical cyclones lurk near Africa, and one has set a new rapid intensification record. Let's hear about the northern it. hemisphere. It's the opposite. One of them in the northern hemisphere and two of them down in the southern hemisphere. The first thing that you'll notice is that Pavan, the one up in the Arabian Sea that's moving into Somalia, that's spinning counterclockwise. That's how low pressure spins in the northern hemisphere. It's the opposite, actually, in the southern hemisphere where they're actually just kind of starting that season, more toward the end of the uh, tropical season up in the Arabian Sea there. Now, Let's talk about what these systems are going to do. With Pavan, it moves into Somalia. Uh, I do think that we have at least a chance of some flooding issues, but overall, probably not the worst storm they've ever seen. Belna is likely to be the most highly impactful storm for people, okay? It's moving down into Madagascar. We're talking a couple inches of rain. You've got a lot of terrain there. Could see mudslides and landslides. And then, if you move a little bit farther out toward the east, this storm is really interesting. Ambali. But the reason it's interesting, even though it's out to sea and it's not going to affect any land, is that it strengthened so ridiculously fast. Between Thursday morning and Friday morning, it went from a 40-mile-per-hour storm to a 155-mile-per-hour storm. That is incredibly fast uh, intensification, and luckily that storm is not going that to affect is land. boom. From 40 to 155 in 24 hours. Where were we? Yep, there it is. Moving right along, Typhoon Kamori breaks the coldest cloud top temperature record according to the watchers. Well, actually, according to Typhoon Kamori, the strongest typhoon to hit the Philippines this year has produced the coldest cloud top temperature on record and may have gained a, distinct, a distinctive place in the history of tropical cyclones according to Scott Backmeyer of the UWCIMSS slash SSEC. Whew. That's crazy. All those letters. Two of the biggest U.S. earthquake faults might be linked. Provocative analysis of seafloor cores suggests that quakes on the Cascadia Fault off California can trigger tremors on the San Andreas. That's just what we need. More bad news. Seismic update. No quakes in note on the map. There was a 6.0 kicking off in Tonga. And that is the only quake worthy of discussion. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Normal activity. Check the links below if you want to know specifics. How Arctic foxes endure minus 70 degrees Celsius. They can endure extremely cold environments with temperatures as low as minus 50. Some of them can even survive minus 70. And their secret is, well, they... Tuck it right in there. Look at them all tucked up there. No, actually, an Arctic fox use, uses its tail as a blanket to cover its body while sleeping. Thick fur definitely helps them stay warm. Unlike their summer coat, Arctic foxes start to put on their thick white coats as winter comes. Did you get a thick white coat for this winter? If you want to know more about the cute little Arctic fox, check out the links below. Now look at the cute little Greta. Greta Thunberg criticizes world's leaders Climate actions as they meet at COP25 to discuss the crisis. <laughs> Isn't it funny how all these rich people burn more CO2 than the entire city to discuss the crisis? <sighs> Leading anti-vaxxer jailed as measles death toll rises to 63 in Samoa. They just locked him up because he's op... Anyway, Samoa's most prominently locally based anti-vaccine advocate will stay behind bars as officials go door-to-door -door vaccinating residents against a massive measles outbreak that has already killed 63, nearly all of whom are children under the age of four. Al Gore? That rhymed. Law firm sues Apple and Samsung 
claiming phones exceed radio frequency radiation safety levels. Heads up, Rex, this is a podcast. Chicago-based law firm Fegan Scott has levied a lawsuit against both Apple and Samsung, claiming that independent testing suggests the radio frequency radiation levels in recent smartphones far exceeds the federal limits when used as marketed by the manufacturers. The basis for the lawsuit dates back to August when the Chicago Tribune launched an investigation into the RF radiation levels output by popular smartphones. You can see here, it's not looking good. Keep those smartphones away from your body. Hello. Words of wisdom. Or throw it in the trash. Sacred Dakota Peace Pipe sells for $40,000. And buyer gives it back to the Minnesota tribe. An anonymous donor who paid almost twice what was assumed to be the value returned the sacred pipe carved by a chief who was hanged after the U.S.-Dakota War of 1862. This is amazing. Now, a sacred pipe given as a peace offering by a Dakota chief to a U.S. soldier has been returned to the tribe by an anonymous donor who paid twice what it was expected to bring at a recent auction. We are humbled by and grateful for this honorable act, said Shelley Buck, tribal council president of the Prairie Island Indian community in Red Wing, Minnesota, Pidamaye, thank you, to the donor for your respect and generosity. The pipe was carved of pipestone, also called Catlinite, by a Dakota chief named White Dog while he was being held prisoner after the U.S.-Dakota War of 1862. He gave it as a gift to Lieutenant King, one of his captors. And now it's back in the right hands. And after I made a great video on some of the nonsense uh, about the non-science being done in the recent decades, uh, this paper came to my light, so I'm going to share it with you guys, a new mechanism for Maunder-like solar minima. Phase synchronization dynamics in a simple nonlinear oscillator of MHD Rossby waves. Now, these are all very complex mathematical models, but there's good pictures. And you could get something out of the, the reading. Thank you, Nine Racy, for opening our eyes to science. Hope you got something out of the video. It is going to be a white Christmas for many of us. I hope you're preparing. Be safe. We love you. Check out our Amazon store if you're buying gifts for loved ones. Buy the gift of preparedness. Or long-term food storage. Preparewiththeranch.com 25-year shelf life. And it's a bargain. Free shipping.